What is the difference between the standard output and the high output three liter twin turbocharged Hurricane engine? Well, today we're gonna to take a deep dive and look at the internal mechanical workings of that high output engine. Welcome back, I'm Alex. This is the third installment of the deep dive series into the three liter Hurricanes. And like you heard, we're looking at the high output. And so for starters, in the Ram 1500s, this high output engine's putting out 541 horsepower as well as 520 pound-feet of torque. Now, in the Wagoneers, which is what we have today, that high output is putting out slightly less, only 500 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. Still plenty of get up and go. Now, not only do the standard open and the high output engines share the same size and dimensions, they actually visually look identical as well, except for one key feature. You guys can see here that the twin turbo lettering and this little crown here is blacked out. That is usually a sign of a standard output hurricane. If you have the high output, this lettering will actually be white or silver because other than that, they literally look identical in the engine bay. Internally, it's a completely different story. Um, the high output engine uses about 50% different parts than the standard output engine, which is interesting because looking at the power stroke standard output and high output engine, internally, both of those engines are identical, where this engine, there are some major differences, which we'll get into. Starting from the bottom, the high output engine has a completely different rotating assembly, different crankshaft, different connecting rods, different rod bearings, as well as different pistons. The pistons in the high output are forged aluminum pistons rather than cast, which are in the standard output. And there are a couple reasons for this, which makes sense. First of all, is the added pressure in the high output engine gonna have higher cylinder pressures. Those cast aluminum pistons are gonna be able to deal with that pressure much better. Secondly, is that the compression ratio on this engine or the high output engine has actually dropped. Um, and I would suspect that's also why the piston design had to change as well. Dropping the compression ratio on the higher output engine may seem a little bit counterintuitive, but in actuality, um, it allows for the turbos to be utilized much better, that boost to be used much more efficiently with a lower compression ratioed engine. And we see this happen with the Cummins high output as well as the Power Stroke high output. Both of those engines actually have lower compression ratios um, because of that. And speaking of turbos, the turbos in the high output are going to be slightly different. I believe they're gonna be larger as well as putting out more boost, 26 pounds of boost where the standard output turbos can only put out uh, 22.4. Now with that added boost is gonna come more cylinder pressure like we mentioned, but also more heat. The higher you compress air or the more boost you have, the more heat comes with that. So you need to have better cooling and that's exactly what the high output has. It has a higher flow air intake and the air to water intercooler, which you guys can kind of barely see over there. Um, it is gonna be much larger on the higher output to be able to cool all that turbo air and feed it in the engine much better. Up top, the higher output comes with a completely different cylinder head, different intake camshaft with a more aggressive lift profile, different intake valves, um, as well as having an elevated red line. The red line on the standard output, this engine is only 5,800 RPM. The red light on that high output is gonna be 6,100 RPM, so a little bit more juice it's gonna be squeezed out. Another major upgrade is the fueling system. We are gonna be maintaining just above 5,000 PSI, same on the standard output, but the high output comes with dual high pressure fuel pumps. This engine only comes with one, as well as having an upgraded high pressure fuel rail, high pressure fuel lines, as well as upgraded injectors. Now, I don't wanna speculate because I don't know for sure, but at least on the diagram that I'm looking at, it does seem like the high output is gonna have some kind of a different EGR setup, potentially an EGR bypass, but I, I just doubt that because the EGR system is 100% an emission component. And as we all know, emission components are, well, highly regulated. So digging into this a little bit further, it looks like the high output hurricane is not gonna have an EGR cooler, hence EGR bypass, what we see right here. Looking over to the standard output side, you can see that this looks to be an EGR cooler. Um, so that's probably what the EGR bypass means. It's not like this isn't going to have an EGR system, which originally I thought was kind of strange, 
but it makes a little bit more sense. It is interesting, however, that the high output is not gonna have an EGR cooler. Maybe they're not running as much EGR flow into the engine. I don't know, but it is certainly very interesting. For those of you who just aren't really aware of what an EGR is, exhaust gas recirculation. Basically what that does is it takes some of the exhaust gases and it brings it back into the intake to be, you know, essentially reburned. But the point of it is, is to actually lower these cylinder temperatures. When you lower cylinder temperatures, it allows the engine to produce less NOx gases, which is toxic to humans. Um, so that's the whole point of EGR gas. The next major difference is the oil that both these engines are gonna run. Our standard output, we run 0W20. The high output engine is gonna be running 0W40 oil. There's a great video on pickup truck and SUV talk where a Stellantis engineer discusses why they went with 0W40 on the high output. And he says the reason why they use the thicker oil is because of the added pressures and the, the greater forces of that high output engine um, in order to maintain the proper bearing or, or clearances for the bearings they needed that thicker oil, the thinner oil just wasn't cutting it. What I also found interesting is the amount of people commenting that they would run the thicker 0W40 oil in the standard output engine in order to get that same type of protection on their bearings. I don't know. I mean, um, first of all, yes, both of these engines actually do share the, the same identical main bearings, but they run different crankshafts. Um, the connecting rods are different as well as the connecting rod bearings are different. So. I honestly would not run the thicker oil. The manufacturer specifies the thickness of oil for usually pretty good reason. And the fact that the rod bearings are different on the high output than the standard output would worry me a little bit running that thicker oil, especially because if you do blow your engine and they realize you're running thicker oil, you can probably kiss that warranty goodbye. Lastly about oil because, well, this thing just freaking reeks of fuel. Um, has nothing to do with the standard high output. One thing that can tend to happen with turbocharged engines is a higher chance of fuel diluting the oil and it smells like that's what's happening here. This is a rental, about 40,000 kilometers on it. I highly doubt the oil is getting changed prematurely. If I owned a twin turbocharged engine, I would be making sure my oil gets changed pretty frequently to try and avoid that right there. Um, but I digress. Lastly, as we were just speaking about fuel, the high output engine is required to run a 91 octane fuel. And at first I thought this would be a bit of a sticking point, especially in a pickup truck. But then I realized that at least in Canada, the amount of money you need to pay to get a Ram 1500 with a high output engine, it's actually about $104,000 um, with taxes in, and that is the cheapest Ram 1500 you can get with a high output engine. So I feel like if you are okay to spend a hundred grand on a 1500 pickup truck, putting in 91 octane at a little bit more of a premium price probably isn't a problem. So those are the major mechanical differences between the high output and the standard output. I would also assume there's probably a much different tune on the higher output um, to really give it that much more power, utilize those turbos in that added fuel system. But all in all, kind of impressive, um, especially when looking at, you know, the Cummins standard output and high output, also the Power Stroke standard output, high output, which literally use the identical internals. So Stellantis has 100% made two different engines, um, which does take some effort and some money, which may be why the high output engines are in very expensive vehicles. Either way, the high output is gonna be a really, really cool performance engine. I don't necessarily think it should be considered the optimum towing engine. I think if you want to buy a Ram 1500 and you know you're gonna be towing with it, I think you should probably just get the standard output. It seems to be much more geared towards a um, work heavy or heavy duty cycles where it seems like high output engine is generally a performance based engine. In something like this, which is a luxury vehicle, it'll probably work just fine. But uh, yeah, if you're looking to put real work in on the three liter, I would recommend the standard output. Well guys, I hope you really enjoyed the little mini series of my deep dive into the three liter Hurricane. Like I said, I've been really wanting to do this and I was hoping to wait to get a Ram 1500, but 
a little bit hard to come by these days. I honestly actually almost bought one, uh, but we just couldn't agree on price. Big shock there. <laughs> but I'm really excited to eventually get a Ram 1500 to me back in New Brunswick, put it on our towing test, do some fuel economy testing. I think that'll be really, really fun just to see where it compares, where it sits. It should give that EcoBoost a really good run for its money, so we'll see about that. Um, anyways, guys, if you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And as always, let me know what you think. Would you ever consider buying a high output, paying that extra premium for it? It does seem like a pretty cool engine. But anyways, enough of me. We'll see you on the next freaking video.